Back in the old days, you had to go to the concert hall or recital hall performance venue to hear a piano performance. Today we're talking about the future of piano performance, live streaming, and I have a friend here, and we're going to be talking about the tools needed to live stream piano. Hi, this is Patrick Marr. Hi, I'm EB. We're coming at you live from Alamo Music. Eric's made a, a trip down here. We call him EB, but EB's made a trip down here from our Kansas City location, uh, the Kawhi Piano Gallery up there. Um, not officially in Kansas City, it's in Leewood. Right? Yeah. So right there, a little bit south, central south, I guess? Yeah, basically. Uh, yeah. But if you are in the Kansas area, Missouri area, I know it's right there on the border, but mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're in Leewood area, Kansas City area, go and see EB or one of our, our friendly Great staff there at the Kawhi Piano Gallery. Um, we have a very fun video today. Uh, Eb, you have a, a, a live streaming platform um, that you've been building over the years, and so I, I've, I'm happy to have you here today because we're going to kind of go over, you know, what got you there, what are the tools, what are the mistakes that you made, what are the tools mm -hmm. that you found have been most helpful, and we'll get all into that. But first, and I was telling you about this earlier, but we do a piano fact at the beginning of yes. each of our videos. And uh, Ted isn't here to do a piano fact. I usually like pick on him to, to because he's our pian our resident piano historian. Uh -huh. um, but I, you know, I was thinking in terms of uh, what we're talking about, the, the conversation we're gonna be having. You know, there's a lot that goes into the production, right? Right. Sure. And, and I was like, okay, piano production. And I started thinking about some of my favorite songs, some of my favorite musicians, uh, and. The recording technology behind recording a piano. Awesome. So, have you? Have you? I'm guessing you've recorded your fair share of pianos. I've done. I've done a fair amount. It's it's a little bit easier nowadays if you're using a digital and you just kind of plug in. Yes. And get going, but uh, you know, a lot had to do with mic placement, right? Big time. And so, if you are looking to record a nine foot piano, um, the mic placement is important. Usually, you need at least a stereo pair somewhere above the soundboard. And there's, you know, there's different philosophies on how spaced out they need to be. If you need to cross them, so many thoughts. Um, and yeah. then underneath the piano, sometimes people yep. like to get that. Uh, but there's a lot of noise going on with the piano, from your your fingers striking the, the the keys to the hammer striking. There's a lot of noise going on. And so, what is a piano sound? Right. Um, and so, it's it's just it to me. Thinking about how you capture that, um, and uh, and, the, and some of the tricks that, like I know George uh, George Martin with the Beatles, um, he would record at halftime. Do you know this? And so, like in, in I did not know in that. my life. So we're gonna we're gonna song song shout out in my life. That's a great song. Yes. Um, but you know that almost made an album actually with that being the title track. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, very cool. I'm glad I picked that one. <laughs> right. uh, you know the the almost harpsichord sounding piano that's in right. there. It's like what's that sound like? How did they get that? Right. Um, and what they did is they slowed the tapes down to half speed. Um, played it in, really? in a lower register, and then uh, and when they played it back, it it sped it up wow. and sounds like this. That's like, how they did that. Yeah, it's like a higher speed, a higher frequency. Um, Fantastic. And uh, instead of yeah, so they recorded it at at half. Uh, you know, if it was at a 120 BPM, they recorded it at 60. Mm -hmm. When it jumps up to that that extra, dub, it doubles it. You know, and and which also makes sense because that's a really hard part to play. Yeah, so they did it half the speed. Now I feel better about myself. And so that that's <laughs> one of those really cool ones where it's like, okay, there's all this ways to not only record the piano but to actually go that next step and yeah. make, and, and involve some sort of uh, you know time time speeding it up or things like that. And then the other one is Beach Boys, Brian Wilson. Uh, he would put he would put tacks in the in the yes, piano hammers prepared piano and and it would and it would sound you know a very unique sound so mm -hmm. piano production there's lots of ways to do it it's really cool to live in the digital age where we don't have to worry about a lot of that but <laughs> right. you know sometimes the acoustic property of a piano is is lost in the digital world absolutely so is. that's our piano fact for the day nice um, so EB tell me what is live streaming if I'm a novice I you know maybe I'm a, a gamer yeah a simp. Yeah. Is that, what they call them? No. Is that what they call these kids nowadays? <laughs> kids these days. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but I, I, you know, I am familiar with the 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 Twitch streaming software. Yeah. YouTube has has a, a, a live streaming capability. Mm -hmm. Facebook has put it mm -hmm. in a lot of people's lens and seen that. Hey, this person's talking to me live. I see a live box. Yep. That technology has evolved greatly over the last 10 years. Big time. Um, and so tell me about your journey, about sure. getting to where you are today. You bet. So the, uh, first off, thanks for having me, Pat. Yeah, it's yeah. a delight to hang out with you. I've been looking forward to this. So live streaming, in essence, for me personally, is wish fulfillment from back in 2003 when I first realized 
this internet thing, huh? And when I bought my first URL back in 2003, I thought to myself, you know, one day, EB, we're gonna be able to show up in our living rooms in our bunny slippers and walk over to our pianos, flip a switch, and we're gonna be able to record ourselves perfectly uh, without having to try any mic placements, all the crazy things that we've mm -hmm. talked about that go into making a piano sound great. And we're gonna be sharing that exact performance with audiences all over the world. This is the gateway to do that. One day, I won't have to worry about having to tour and do all these different kind of things because my performing stage will be my house or apartment. It will connect we us all, right? Yeah, exactly. Man. And that day has arrived, yeah. essentially, through what we call live streaming. So basically, it's a performance where you're performing live and we are streaming it mm -hmm. or taking that through the internet and popping it into whatever device you are using your internet to watch us on. So it sounds a little complicated because, you know, if you think about it, there's, there's you know, monitoring yourself. Mm -hmm. um, they're setting up the connections. Uh, and then there's, you know, creating an audience or something that an audience would, would enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, you know, I feel like one of the things that really kind of launched music into the live streaming, you know, it, it's not that this is like a very brand new thing, but the, uh, you know, one of the events, the pandemic happening, a lot of teachers had to figure out, hey, how do I reach my audience, my 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 students, mm -hmm. and how do I have that communication line? And we all got familiar with with technology like Zoom yes. um, and technology of using a camera. We've run into the, just the very simple issues of like feedback or multiple people in a room and hearing that. So these are challenges that come up with uh, creating a production that's a live stream. Absolutely. Um, and so in this video, I, you know, I kind of want to talk about your process of this is my ideal setup to get me the player ready to a perform with my my uh, with my instrument, but also talk to my audience and have engagement. Sure, uh, sure, sure. So I sort of self-describe or self-label sometimes as the Ted Lasso of piano lounge music. Okay. So that'll give a bit of a reference uh, for folks in the sense that Ted Lasso was a coach of an American football team and uh, that was college division. It's like, oh, then he's going to coach another football team. But football is in England, which is soccer. Football. Right? Football, yeah. exactly. Football is life. Anyway, the point being... Um, like, how much harder can it be? They're both called football. They're both on fields, right? Okay, yeah. so... Uh, so much harder. So many other different things that seemed like they would be the same but very different, but also things that do, and uh, in fact, cross over. They're like, okay, cool. So your background was, you're talking about in, right. in so classrooms, for, right? So, well, so for about 10 years or so, I was the p lounge piano player for a hotel. Okay, okay. Right? Yeah. And so that is something that when I moved to Kansas City, I knew I wanted to continue doing, but in a live streaming format because of, like you said, with Digital COVID. lounge. Exactly, right? okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A virtual lounge, a virtual exactly lounge, right, yeah. yeah. And so uh, I saw that as the potential to be, be done now. And so I said, okay, how much harder can it be? Well, there's a lot of things <laughs> that go into it that as Ted learned, as I learned going through it, uh, that you need to adapt and change and add to and subtract to make successful piano lounge experience or whatever kind of music stream that you have mm -hmm. to be doing. There are a lot of music streamers doing a lot of different things on yeah. Twitch and other platforms, but my specialization is in piano lounge format, which is basically being able to play solo piano, mm -hmm. uh, playing multiple styles, jazz, pop, rock, blues, some classical, as well as inviting uh, smaller ensembles of uh, vocalists, uh, piano trios, and be able to catch up those things and send them via live stream. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, as far as the your preferred gear, because I, I know yeah. you've probably gone through your fair share of uh, of keyboards, of uh, sure. digital pianos, maybe even tried it with acoustic pianos and mics. Yep. What it, what is the easiest setup and what is the hardest setup? So by far, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. And so by far, by far for me with what I do uh, is. Uh, there are some there are some good uh, rules of thumb. There are some definite do's. There are some definite don'ts. So mm -hmm. first off, uh, what I started off with was the exact same tool set, the same tool kit that I was using when I switched from a in an in person. Uh, studio okay. for teaching lessons mm -hmm. to an online studio during COVID. When I switched from, I was teaching uh, all of my students uh, in an in-person format. And when COVID started happening, I thought two things. One, okay, we're definitely gonna have to go to either a hybrid or an in-person model. But if I'm gonna do that, I'm going to start looking at also opportunities to be able to live stream my performances also. So I built what I do now with both 
things running concurrently or in parallel, thinking, okay, I'm gonna build an online studio and I'm going to build an online performance stage. Okay. So what I describe that works for Piano Lounge also happens to work really, really well for online lessons. Okay, yeah. Um, so the first thing that I did was get my space where I teach online set up with uh, my most favorite performance controller that's ever been made probably in the history of mankind, the VPC-1 Kawhi. Okay. Um, so I have a Kawhi VPC-1 that I've got in 2013, and I've been using that in my studio to mm -hmm. record and perform with, uh, as well as using to teach for my main teacher instrument. Yeah. And then I had a secondary keyboard off to the side that the students would be able to use and play on, right? Mm -hmm. And so from that point, now that I'm going to be teaching and performing uh, for students, as well as for an audience, uh, viewers. What I did was I made sure that the VPC-1 could be seen very clearly by adding an overhead okay. uh, cam. So basically there are a few things you want. You need to have a really great piano or keyboard, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that's got a great sound, whether you're generating it through a VST or a software, a piece of software on your computer, or whether it's got great built-in internal sound. Mm -hmm. so you want to have a great, quality sounding as much as you can afford. So that's number one. Number two, you're gonna to wanna to have a way that you can capture both yourself as well as the instrument, uh, if possible. Usually that's called a face cam. So where you have a camera that's seeing you directly as well as the instrument as you're playing. You can capture the whole scene, okay. right? And that's one camera? That's one camera. Okay. And then what I use right now and started really, right from the beginning uh, that has worked really well is a secondary cam or an overhead cam. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. I've seen people mount them on really tall tripods, you can mount, whatever works best for you. I found that just if you if you have the ability just to mount, there are tons of ceiling mounts mm -hmm. that you can just drill right in. And whatever camera you're using, I use a Logitech Brio 4K for the resolution for that, and then it pulls down uh, right over that, and I just flip the switch and it's on. Mm -hmm. And that works great for doing an overhead shot. Okay. Um, in terms of the VPC-1 itself, what a VPC-1 is, it's a performance controller. It has grand piano action that Kawhi Piano has built. It's the exact same kind of action you would find in their grand pianos. And all it is is the housing for that and a button. It is the smoothest, slickest, mm -hmm. uh, just elegant piece of hardware. And what it does is it allows me to trigger uh, software samples, VSTs, inside my computer as I play to be able to really re relegate, regulate the sound. Yeah. Um, and that, for me, has been by far the easiest way to generate high-quality audio, both for my students to hear as well as for my streamer. Okay, audience. and then and then you are, uh, how does that interface with your computer? You got it. So basically, you've got the VPC-1 here. I'm playing, here's my workstation, here's my face cam, here's my overhead camera, here's my studio monitors and on my old workstation desk, right? Okay, then my PC is right here, and it's running via... MIDI, DIN, uh, DIN MIDI cables okay. uh, that are going in. You can also use USB MIDI, whatever works best for you, but there are two types, USB and DIN, uh, the old school. And I just run it right into my PC right there. It's a five foot throw, super easy to pull out. Mm -hmm. uh, that's processing in to my computer via my audio interface. Now I use an RME UCX, uh, it's, a, it's an old Fireface UCX. That's pretty top shelf. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't need something that fancy. Really what you need if you're doing just talk back and vocals, and if you're using a keyboard or piano to play, all you really need is one solid vocal mic, mm -hmm. as well as uh, some type of input for your piano. Now for me, because I'm using MIDI to trigger a software uh, bank, right? All I need is the MIDI. But if you also wanna have the option, and this is a really good option to have, uh, most digital keyboards, most digital pianos and hybrids also have a stereo uh, out, right? Yeah. So you want to send that line out send with a stereo. So you want to have a, a, an audio interface well, that has at least yeah. a stereo input. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, you know, that's with the VST, I guess that's a little bit more complicated with triggering off your samples yeah. live time with your video. For sure. Um, and uh, what, you know, the different platforms that there are out there, what has been your experience? You you've primarily do Twitch, I'm guessing? Right? Yes, correct. Um, mm -hmm. Which is kind of the known software. Who, did Microsoft buy Twitch? Who? Uh, Amazon. Amazon actually, yep. Twitch, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, you know, one of the biggest platforms for live streaming, the big, you know, the most audiences are going to look for streaming there on. Um, and then, you know, do you, you tie that, I'm guessing, to your other, you know, to uh, social media, um, and you're able to, you know, promote yourself in different ways. Um, but what, you know, what, uh, what do you see as, you know, the future of this live streaming? Is, is, is it something, it's obviously something that's growing. 
Um, but uh, do you think all live music is going that? All our performances, do you think that yeah. bands will be playing in, you know, around the world together? And you know, how does latency affect sure. live streaming? Well, first off, you hit on you hit on the, the golden ticket, yeah. right? Or, or or the sort of the golden metric, which is the word latency. Latency is the delay in terms of when you are performing and making your actual action to generate the sound versus when the computer can finally crunch all the numbers to make that sound happen. And sometimes it can go really fast where you wouldn't even notice a difference. But a lot of times when you're running a lot of sophisticated hardware and software together, it sounds like almost an echo, mm -hmm. and that can be very, very pronounced. And uh, the, the thing with Twitch right now is that that may not seem like a big deal. Well, when you stream it then hundreds of miles away, there it also becomes latency over distance and over time combined with that. So you, I might play a chord here, and then I'm in San Antonio, and in Kansas City, it might hit, and then they'll hear it, right, in Kansas City. Yeah. So that challenge of being able to play live with other musicians, right, to be able to, that's kind of what Patrick mm -hmm. was, was steering it towards, right? Yeah, yeah. And so you could, uh, theoretically, if we can get this latency lag thing figured out, you could literally form a band that's on all, you know, six, seven continents with different players at different times, yeah. right, and be able to sync that up. We're not there yet, although it has been done and definitely recreated in, in smaller, smaller pools, and it's happening even today. No one's figured out how to make it mainstream yet. So yeah. whoever can do that, it's going to be amazing. But in terms of where we are for the future, it's important to remember where we came from uh, and where we are currently. You know, the reason that this worked and the reason where we are at a place now where live streaming can be successful, not just for fun and not just for a sort of experimentation, but literally as a monetizing source of revenue for myself and many other professional musicians mm -hmm. is because we all were forced to grow up, to mature faster on our uh, sort of timeline when it comes to understanding technology as a society. Yeah. COVID forced that, right? And now because we have embraced certain things technologically that maybe we would not have initially, what that has done, it's given us the opportunity to start thinking about things from a professional standpoint and from a consumer standpoint that we would never consider even a few years ago. What I have seen in terms of the overall trends is that musicians, indies are embracing more and more a composite source of revenue as well as an overall calendar. So you will see people who used to stream during COVID who found that successful. Some of them have gone back to live performance in regular venues, brick and mortar spaces, right? Yeah. Uh, but they've also kept their live streaming that they found successful. They built an entire, when you can perform for people in like uh, I have, uh, part of my audience, Germany, uh, Eastern Asia, uh, Africa, uh, the UK, as well as any time zone in the United States, uh, that's a crowd you would normally never be able to reach if you just played mm -hmm. out in the local pub. And so being able to have your local community uh, experience what you do, as well as being able to have these people uh, literally across the world, it just makes sense to keep both going. Now, I have also seen major players coming in. Amazon Music is in people's channels all over the place. Amazon is also developing things right now that are very specific to where you can do uh, very special collaborative efforts that they've just released uh, and, and are starting to test out within beta testing and it's only, that are specifically geared towards streamers and streamer communities. You're only going to see that happen more and more with people like Apple and Apple Music, Spotify, and it's all going to start happening. Uh, everybody wants a piece of, uh, piece of this pie. Yeah. YouTube is really pushing live streaming, especially right now, and it's also, as it's been enticing large gaming Mm -hmm. streamers over yeah. uh, from Twitch yeah. and as well as they're starting to focus in on music streamers. So that's definitely a, a market share. And, uh, you know, this, you know, I was thinking about it. I was like, what do you think the, uh, the, the big difference is in like a live recording of music versus a, uh, so like, you know, a high quality live recording, well recorded live band playing versus a live streaming of a band like like what, such a what great do you question. yeah what do you think draws the audience from right. one to the other it's it's such a great question because you see this happen you see it play out people watch the live streams and after you have finished your performance live mm -hmm. almost immediately what's called a vod or a video on demand is available to the public as well but those have a huge fall off in terms of viewership yeah. if people are really really drawn to that experiencing that live performance 
in the moment right when it's happening because part of it is that they get to participate. Yeah. You get to chat, you get to be able to send your little emotes and these mm -hmm. little pictures, right? And be able to be there and just be part of that community. Yeah. Exactly. So it's a digital interaction. And so, yeah. So, I mean, that's all very fascinating. And, and, and it's, it's cool that that's where we're going and the music community is going and, and we'll have a home of creating music and listening to music and being a part of the audience. Um, and so, very cool. Thank you, EB, for for you know answering some of the questions today. I know uh, you know you listed off some gear there, but we will put we'll put some of that all together in writing. Um, but really, you know, you need the controller. It's essential to have some some sort of, of device to to play the instrument. A controller is going to need a sample. Um, you can get a digital piano. The MP11 has the same action. Exactly. And all, already has the, the the piano sample on it. Um, and then just you know making sure that you have an audio interface that can connect and can live stream um, and the camera hookup as well. Um, and so just making sure all that works with a computer that's somewhat modern. Yep. Um, well, thank you again for, for joining us today here. Again, this is EB. He's up in Kansas City. You can find us at the Kansas City Kauai Piano Gallery. I'm down here in San Antonio at Alamo Music, part of the same big family. Uh, but it was fun to have EB here with us today. Make sure you guys are subscribed. If you have any questions, if you have experience, if you have gear that you recommend, please leave those in the comments. I know a lot of people will appreciate on their journey, what is the best place to go? Uh, what are the you know the things to avoid, gear to avoid, um, and what has made it easier for you if you have done any form of live streaming? That would be very helpful for everybody in the comments. Again, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. We'll have EB on a couple more videos as well um, because he's here in San Antonio visiting us. Uh, but thank you guys for watching.